I see a lot of a lot of criticism, a lot of criticism for the few videos that I did about the Pope eating with a certain group of people that many people are criticizing him for not for eating with and for not doing repent calling them to repentance. And um I just thought for a moment, since people are levying that criticism, maybe it would be good to do a video on what does repentance mean? What does it actually mean? And so I'm just going to use the catechism here a little bit. I just thought when you're when you're leveling criticism at somebody, I, there was this little video that I saw the other day and I just thought it's good if you're going to criticize somebody. Um, let's let's uh, let's offer some solutions. So just listen to this short video and then I'll go on and just talk a little bit about repentance. Criticize another person only in the measure that you are willing to help the person deal with the problem that you're you're raising. You know, you're you're critical of someone, maybe legitimately so. All right, to what degree are you willing to help that person deal with the problem? No, I'm not willing at all. Well, then keep your mouth shut. <laughs> then don't say anything. If you're totally unwilling to help, don't say anything. Yeah, hey, I'm kind of mildly interested, you know, in helping. All right, then maybe offer a mild criticism. No, I'm in all the way. I'm willing to commit my entire self to helping you deal with that problem. Okay, then go ahead and criticize. Very, very good principle. I think a lot of hurt feelings and resentments and all that would clear up if we follow that principle. I just thought that video from Bishop Barron was very good. And I'm sure some people are going to say, oh, why are you pushing this modernist bishop up there? And and did you not see this video of Ben Shapiro and this, that and the other? Yeah, I saw Ben Shapiro's video and I saw his Bishop Barron's clarification afterwards. And, if, you know, people, when they're trying to explain things and if they don't get it right, they can always come along and clarify when they get uh, when they get challenged on it. But the principle is correct. If we're if we're going to criticize somebody, or a situation as Catholics, okay, we see something that's wrong, or well, what are we doing to, to help resolve what we see as wrong, if it is indeed wrong? But anyway, this is the world we live in. Just on Catholic repentance, on the word repentance, because it comes up in the Bible. Um, and it, okay, in, in, in Hebrew, the word is shuva. And it means to return. So uh, repent and turn away from idols. Uh, you know, return. You'll see this in the Bible. Uh, so you can see that that word repentance there. Shuva, which, which literally means return. When Christ is talking about repentance, he's using he, he, the word that comes up many times is metanoiete, which is the plural of a metanoia, the cha a change, to change. You know, that's uh, the Christ gave us a gospel so we would change the way we would act we would act with each other we would change the way we deal with God in a sense we would we would know God as our father <laughs> you know and this is really important in the spiritual life I, th I think a lot of people think repentance is do we stand on a street and hold up a sign and say all gays are going to hell if you don't repent you know, when people hear the word repentance and they see some Christians doing that, then that's the connotation of oh, repentance. You know, you're, you're going, the first thing that they hear is you're going to hell. Uh, you know, and you can't scare, I'm telling you, you cannot scare somebody into loving God. Because what they will end up doing is becoming atheists. You will, you will literally turn them into atheists. Because the, the, the image that you've created in their mind of Christianity is one that they are going to hell. I mean, it's seen it. We've seen it at, at funerals of different people. They're going to hell. Some Christian groups I haven't seen it in the Catholic Church. But you see it coming through in the comments that the Pope should do this, that this is the way he should do evangelization. And most people, I mean, where are we going with this? So I'm going to just use the, the catechism, the Catholic Church, just to talk about repentance. And it's uh, it's it's verses uh, uh, 1430 uh, onwards to uh, 1432. So those those uh, sections. Uh, Jesus call to conversion and penance like that of the prophets before him does not aim first at outward works sackcloth and ashes fasting and mortification but at the conversion of heart inner conversion without this such penances remain sterile and false however 
interior conversion urges expression of visible signs, gestures, uh, works of penance. And we go on, one, four, three, one. Interior repentance, because at the end of the day, what Christ is asking, asking us to, to do is change the heart. You know, I can, you can outwardly say, oh, I'm living the Catholic faith. I'm going to mass and I'm dressing up and I'm preaching. But is your heart changed? That's what he's that's the that's the change of heart. And and very few people you cannot judge somebody if they've actually changed their heart. Only them and God knows what is in their heart. Anyway, interior repentance is a radical reorientation of our whole life. A return, a conversion to God with all our heart, an end of sin, a turning away from evil a repugnance towards evil actions we have committed. At the same time, it entails the desire and resolution to change one's life with hope of God's mercy and trust in the help of his grace. This conversion of heart is accompanied by a salutary pain and sadness which the fathers called animi cruciaticus, cruciatus, affliction of spirit, and compunctio cordis, repentance of heart. And in 1432, this is a key here, I think. The human heart is heavy and burdened. God must give man a new heart. Conversion is, first of all, a work of grace of God who makes our hearts turn to him. Restore, in us, restore us to thyself, O Lord, that we may be restored. God gives us the strength to begin anew. It is in discovering the greatness of God's love that our heart is shaken by the horror and weight of, of sins and begins to fear offending God by sin and beginning separated and being separated from him. The human heart is converted by looking upon him who our sins have pierced. Let us fix our eyes on Christ's blood and understand how precious it is to his father for poured out from our salvation it has brought to the whole world the grace of repentance. Um, a few years ago, I was doing a project and they made us do a course on change management. I don't know if people in the business world know what I'm talking about. So you're introducing a change. And, and, in, and in this process, you know, there's confusion. Uh, the Things might go down. Then there's acceptance. And, and then it goes up. And, you know, we move to the new reality you know change change management happens when you get bereaved you know if somebody is bere if somebody loses their wife or their husband they ha they're forced to go through a process of change management where you know they're accepted at the new reality and they fight it and they hate it and then they, they accept it or if you get a diagnosis of cancer it, it, it's so so you, the the curve is the same the the reactions are the same and it's the same with when you're confronted with the with the gospel you're confronted with um, tr accepting a new reality, but it's a reality that you have to bring into your heart. You have to, you know, and it's a grace of God. God does this. God does the converting, not us. You know, we just we're we're we're, we're just we just humbly accept the love that we've encountered in knowing Christ. And you know, we're we're in 2023. And we have lambasted the Pope for not calling people to repentance, um, you know, explicitly naming it out, calling to people to repentance. And there, there's been umpteen comments on this at all. You know, he invited them. Did he tell them to repent? I've seen it on the channel. Did he do this? Did he do that? Christ, the Pope doesn't convert people. I, I think people need to understand this. The Pope doesn't convert people. And that's the way that we bring people to the truth is through is through is, is showing them the beauty of encountering Christ. And people might think this is all warm and fuzzy. No, he should do this. He should do this. He should he should just just say it out loud. And and the people say, look, the Pope has said it. But the reality is when the Pope says something in the church, he gets lambasted because he said, I'm not going to change church teaching. He has actually said this. The catechism. You know, which teaches us the faith hasn't been rewritten under this pontificate. I suppose some people have missed this. 
uh, apart from the death penalty and that's driven a lot a whole lot of other discussion but he hasn't redefined marriage he hasn't uh, approved the blessing of different unions he hasn't said that sin outside sex outside of marriage is is not a sin i mean and the the problem is we we, we are trying to evangelize in the world today and we're trying to sell them sell them our faith really or give them the faith the first place that christ will use to catechize to evangelize is a person that actually lives it as somebody that actually lives the faith or is trying to live the faith you know people will see okay this person has something that is making them happy um and it, and it, that's why it's important that if we love the church you know, if we have to be authentic, you know, I've 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 seen so many, you know, double double lives in this church. You know, people and people that have gone up and given the most excellent sermons and written dozens of books, and the amount of books that they've written is just oh incredible and this that. And then all of a sudden the scandal falls, and he says, "Wow, you know, he knew the faith so much, and yet he was living that double life." And sometimes I think the people that evangelize the most maybe are those that have done three years in Janakalo. Because you're not going to get maybe the 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 doctor of theology, but you might get somebody that actually knows a little bit about the faith and that has actually that actually lives paragraph one, four, three, two. That conversion is foremost a work of the grace of God who makes our heart return to him. Um and so what am I saying here? Yeah, I mean, the, the church has been been very clear in its dogma, which it should, for so many years. Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict and the popes before that, we've had Humana Vitae, we've had this and that and the other. But how do you bring somebody to know the truth? Or Because you can't bring them, but how do you open them, expose them to know the truths of the gospel? By living it. Simple as by living it by actually doing what christ did simple as we do what christ did and that's the only that's my meditation on this uh, and so forth you know you can go out and stand in the street corner and say you're all going to hell unless you repent uh, i've seen it in belfast you know and when preachers are up there they always focus on the same thing <laughs> The people that are annoyed with the gospel always focus on the same thing. So you hate gays, yes. Oh, you're you're. We love you, but we hate the sin. But you're going to hell unless you repent. And you see the arguments there. Um, and I and I'm saying, okay, that's an interesting way of evangelization. There's no relationship between the preacher and those being preached to. It's just you know, there's no the. the it's a it's um, it might work god might use it that that way but i i i i firmly believe it's in it's in our communities it's in our churches the, this that's where we need to to show people the beauty of the gospel and the truth and to stand for the truth and uh, the truth is timeless it does it can't change it can't be contradicted what was a sin two thousand years ago what separates us from god two thousand years ago will separate us from god today i mean and if you read the spiritual masters like if you read you know the philokalia and all the desert fathers the the church fathers the saint the doctors of the church you know the spiritual life is what it is you know it is what it is those obstacles that that are there sin is what it is it can't be changed it's like saying oh we're going to make we're going to make bread now with potato flour we're going to do a new it's not bread anymore it won't be bread it won't just wouldn't taste the same or look the same or feel the same uh, you know the formula for bread is the formula for bread flour water salt uh, it is what it is yeast and 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 truth is what it is and we have to we have to do our best to to help people to understand the truth by living it by living it by actually live, by actually going into prayer, by actually understanding prayer, and understanding who Christ is and what he what he asks us to do, because so many people, so many times you, you see people that have this misconception of, of Christianity because that's what we've done over two thousand years, we've we've given some people, a horrible understanding of Christianity of Catholicism. We have, 
we have we've, we we haven't lived up to what we've preached um it simply has and um you know instead of pointing the person the finger at what why other people aren't doing it and i'm not judging the pope here people are saying oh he's he should be doing it this way he should be doing evangelization this way well what are you doing what are you doing to give the gospel the good news the, the encounter with christ and the eucharist prayer what are you doing to help others nothing the pope isn't stopping us preaching the gospel the pope isn't stopping us using the catechism i don't haven't heard any directive from rome stopping us using the catechism or the baltimore catechism or the council of trent catechism whatever one you want to use i haven't heard any directive from rome to stop us using this or to stop us using scripture to stop us using to say this is the truth this is what saint paul taught us this is this is what christ taught us you know i haven't heard anything from the pope no don't use scripture don't use the catechism you're not allowed to use that no i'm i'm hold off i'm rewriting everything so just hold your horses until i get it he hasn't said anything like that in fact he said the opposite i'm, I'm not going to change church teaching but I suppose we, we we cherry pick what we have and then I'll be called naive and I'll be called this. <laughs> Repentance. You know, you can change your life outwardly. You can say, oh, I've stopped sinning or you're stopped sinning. You can actually stop physically you know, doing things. But the, the change of heart is something that only you know. Have you changed your or has have you has have you let the grace of God change your heart? And it's that interior repentance that nobody sees. That's the repentance that that that's the change that we need that 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 that, that the world needs. And it takes skill. It takes it takes the grace of God. It's all the work of God. At the end of the day, Christ died for us. He's he's the redeemer. Um I just wish more would take up this task of challenging the world with the gospel and what 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 the beauty of the gospel is um and uh, if somebody can do if somebody can do what pope francis is doing better well put yourself forward for it put yourself forward for it you know if if you can do it better if you can minister better put yourself forward for it maybe some of these people that are living in sin that we've judged are living in sin maybe take it out of their situation maybe take them out of that that situation maybe say look come to a retreat with us come here we'll pay for you to come to a retreat we'll pay for you to do this so that they can actually know the beauty of the gospel reach out talk to them understand them walk with them so that you can actually give them the gospel because you, you you know evangelization is a movement of the heart it's actually the heart that's transformed it's i want to know this i want to know this anyway pray for the pope i really do I, you know i I'm, the, in prayer i've been so challenged i don't know there's two images that keep coming to me in prayer with this pope is john is saint john bosco's image of the eucharist and mary the pope steering the the steering us tree the eucharist and the mary it was that during covid when the pope came out on saint peter's it was just like the whole world stood still and i don't know it was just something that struck me so much then and the other thing that, that that is coming to me a lot in prayer is 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 is, is, is the is the pope of fatima that he is the pope of fatima and i don't know what that means and if we are in the times of if we are in these times if Our Lady did come at Fatima to prophesize this Pope, you know, there could be a lot more around this than we, we realize. And that's why people, you know, it's it's important that we pray for the Pope and that we help others, you know, understand the beauty of the gospel of prayer. We could do so much more. That's what I think anyway. God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.